About three days ago, I put a poll on my Instagram story asking if any of you had simple fingerboard questions that you wanted answered. I didn't really think I would get too many responses, but I was very wrong. Like, I was severely wrong. I got like a ton of questions. So this video is going to be me answering as many of those questions as I possibly can in one video. Hey guys, welcome back to another Fingerboard Friday. If this is your very first Fingerboard Friday that you've ever watched, Fingerboard Friday is basically just a series where every single Friday I make an epic fingerboard video. Just before I jump straight into this video, I just wanted to say that I now have a Discord server, so link in the description if you want to go check that out. And it's basically a place where you can have really any conversation like fingerboarding, biking, skateboarding, bike parks, skate parks. YouTube, content, social medias. It's kind of like just a super big platform where you can do all of that. So now I have my very own survey, link in the description. And if you ever have a question like what I'm going to be answering in this video, but you don't want to wait for the next video where I make a video like this, you can just ask the question on Discord and then I will get back to you as soon as I can. I'm on there maybe a little bit too much, but there's a ton of people on Discord at all times. So if you ever have a question, just fire it away on my server and then somebody will answer your question on Almost immediately. Okay, now let's get into all the fingerboard questions that a lot of people have. Also, make sure you follow me on my Instagram because the next time I make a video just like this, then you get to ask a question and I will answer it. So the very first question is how can I get better at fingerboarding with a cheap fingerboard? So there's quite a few different ways you can. I'll just use an Amazon fingerboard and a tech deck for an example. Basically the difference from a cheap fingerboard and an expensive fingerboard is honestly just the parts that are on it, obviously. But the board definitely doesn't matter a whole lot. It does, but it kind of doesn't at the same time. So the decks on both of these boards, this one is wood, this one is plastic, but they're really about the same size, which is about 29 millimeters. But basically all I can say about getting better is just watch tutorials on YouTube of how to do certain tricks that you want to learn. And then from there, just keep practicing because the ultimate key to fingerboarding is just do it over and over again until you get it. And that's about it if you want to get better on a cheap fingerboard. Question number two, are good trucks actually worth it? So I actually haven't really got super expensive trucks in the past. Right now I'm using these trucks that are on my board. These trucks are still considered cheap in the fingerboard community, but they are honestly not that bad. They have a very professional shape to them, which makes them feel really professional. If you get dynamic trucks or Black River trucks, those ones are obviously going to be better, but they're not like a whole lot better in my mind. But don't take my word from it just because I still haven't got like Black River trucks or dynamic trucks because I don't really want to spend that much money just on trucks when I have these trucks and I have a lot of these trucks so whenever I need new trucks I just throw more of these ones on and they work so I definitely say good trucks are better but if you can find a truck with a kind of a nice professional shape to it it'll feel very similar to a professional truck okay question number three how to not get bored at fingerboarding we've all pretty much been there one day you love to fingerboard and the next day you're just kind of bored of it and I went through a phase just about a month ago where I kind of stopped fingerboarding and I would really only fingerboard in front of the camera for you guys but now I've gotten back into it quite a bit more but a month ago I also had way less time so now I have a bit more time but really just keep on progressing if you're at a point where like you feel like you can't progress just keep watching videos on how to do this one trick and then that'll kind of just motivate you to keep fingerboarding to land that trick and then get good at it so there's different ways to stay motivated when it comes to fingerboarding but I would say just watching YouTube videos about fingerboarding is the best way to not get bored of it this question how to learn a board slide uh, that's pretty simple. All you really need to do is be able to do an ollie and just pop it up on the rail like that. Question number four or five, I don't really know. You'll probably see like a little thing up on the screen that'll say, but I think it's four. Yeah, I probably won't even count that board slide one as a question just because it was so fast, so. Yeah. This question is, I'm not a beginner anymore, but when I was a beginner, I struggled to put grip tape on cleanly. So I would definitely say quite a few of us have been there before when you just have a nice fresh setup and you're just putting the grip on and then it just doesn't work that well. I would say the best way to grip a fingerboard is just obviously put the grip tape on and I have like a little teak tuning nail file which I've found works really well but I've also taken just like straight sandpaper to my fingerboard and just do that and I almost find I get a cleaner result with doing that 
but I still like to use the little file probably the most. Question number five, the nuts on my trucks keep on getting loose almost after every trick that I do. How can I avoid it? So I haven't really had this problem too much because the nuts on my truck have some nylon inside of them so they keep them on way better, but I have seen a few people do this. So you take the nuts off your trucks just like this. I'm using tech deck trucks because these trucks are not very good. I'm not going to show it right on camera, but there's the nut and something I've seen quite a few people do is put the tiniest bit of hot glue inside of them and then thread it back on and then the hot glue acts just like nylon bolts that don't come off and I've heard that it's actually really effective. So if these keep falling off, just put some hot glue in them and then put them back on and that should fix your problem. Or what I would recommend is just getting some nuts that have nylon inside of them and then they won't come off. Question number six, I believe we are on, and it's how can I progress faster? So progressing fast is what everybody wants to do, especially beginners, because beginners start out and they can barely ollie or do really any tricks. So you definitely want to progress fast because you want to be able to do almost any trick on a fingerboard really clean and almost every try. So again, I would just recommend watching other fingerboard YouTubers like either me, David Jones, a bunch of other people are out there that you can watch. It doesn't just have to be me, but basically just watch videos on how to do certain tricks. I would recommend learning an ollie and a kickflip as the first trick. Even though an ollie is a difficult trick, I would recommend if you can learn that as almost your first trick, then almost any other trick after that is pretty simple. Also, when you are watching a tutorial on how to do the trick, be fingerboarding while you are watching that video. So just put your phone up on a table while you're watching the video and just keep doing the trick as they're explaining it. That's how I've learned a lot of my tricks. So don't just watch the tutorial one day and then try it the next day. Do it while you are watching the video and that will really help. Question number seven, how often should you change your grip tape? Shout out question mark. Shout out to this user right here for this question. So I definitely recommend changing your grip tape kind of whenever you start to do tricks that you keep on slipping. What I mean by that is if you like go to pop your board and it kind of just like you go for a nice solid pop and it kind of just doesn't pop as easily. Kind of a bad example. But if you go to pop your board and you kind of just keep doing this like more consistently, I would definitely recommend it's time to either clean your grip tape or add new grip tape. Or if you're using cheap grip tape, it'll kind of start to like peel at the edges. And once it gets like completely unbearable, then you should obviously change your grip tape. But higher quality grip tapes like Rip Tape, I did have it. <laughs> Okay, I cannot find it, but higher quality grip tapes like what Black River sells, that tape will last you probably months of use. It might start to wear down a little bit, but if you're using China tape, I would definitely recommend changing it every couple months or so. Question number eight is how do I kick flip? So I've made quite a few videos out there on how to kick flip one of which is my most viewed video on the channel and it has like 250,000 views, so I'm pretty happy with that. But basically pop up like you're doing an ollie, slide your fingers to one side, but keep sliding and then that'll flip your board and then land it. I have no idea what Ginger is doing, but he's like trying to climb up the wall. Okay, on to question number nine. Question number nine is how do you get the pop for an ollie so high? So I actually learned an ollie as my very first fingerboard trick because I thought it was the easiest trick, which I was actually wrong. I always thought that an ollie was the simplest and easiest because that's the easiest on a skateboard. But apparently the kickflip is actually the easiest. Now that I know that, I would definitely say a kickflip is maybe a little bit easier than a consistent ollie, but I would still recommend learning an ollie first. But basically just take your middle finger, snap the board down, slide a little bit, and that'll get it in the air and pops the board. Question number 10, are you gonna host an event where we can all sesh on the concrete fingerboard park? So I really do wanna do a fingerboard event, but I don't really want to set up all the stuff for an event and then nobody shows up, so that's kind of my fear. So right now I'm just working on finding a really good location where we could do it. I'm thinking just in some sort of park somewhere. Ideally, I would probably do it in like Salt Lake City in Utah, because that's like my favorite city of all times. I love it down there, but I can't really travel right now. So maybe next year we'll do something like that because I really do want to do that and see how many of you guys show up. Please, if I end up doing that, please show up because I don't want nobody to show up. Question number 11. 
what is the best 34 millimeter cheap fingerboard? So when I was into buying fingerboards, now I just make them all, but Teak Tuning was my go-to for like cheap fingerboards, but most of those are in 32 millimeter. And I actually don't really know if they sell them in 34 millimeters, but I would assume they probably do. So either look on Amazon or go to the Teak Tuning website and you should find a 34 millimeter fingerboard for relatively cheap. How do you kick flip into a grind? So if you're unfamiliar, a grind is basically where you land with your trucks in some order. Some people consider a board slide a grind, but I do not. So a grind equals trucks on a rail or a ledge. But it's definitely really hard to do tricks on some sort of ledge or ramp or anything. But I would recommend just being able to ollie into the grind first and then just work on trying to kick flip into the grind or any other trick. Also, when you are going into the grind, look at how high up this is and just picture the whole thing is flat. Even if it's a rail that's like really skinny like this, just picture it all flat and just picture doing a kickflip onto something this height and then just line it up perfectly. Question number 13, actually question number 12. Question number 12 is how different are tech deck trucks compared to professional trucks? really different. So these are tech deck trucks on this side and then these are more of a professional style truck, still not fully professional trucks, but they're really similar. One of the main differences is where the wheel sits. That's like completely flat there. Whereas these trucks are kind of rounded where the wheel sits, which definitely helps with different types of wheels. And then obviously these ones are more designed for like a 29 millimeter board. So these ones are really small. And also the bushings that come with tech deck trucks are plastic instead of rubber. So these ones are really flexible and you can turn them like that. I'll use this side for a better example. Whereas these ones will pretty much not move at all. Question 13, that is apparently not a question. Can you please do a review of the Pro Tech Deck? So I have been actually kind of looking to get my hands on one of those and it's basically Tech Deck made a professional fingerboard professional fingerboard. <laughs> but at the moment in Canada, they're really hard to get your hands on. So I've been looking on eBay and still can't find any, but I definitely do want to make a video on that. Are bearing fingerboard wheels going to help with my tricks or are they just cool? So I would definitely say that wheels are one of the most important parts of a fingerboard. If you have super cheap wheels, even if they have bearings, but they're just kind of like grinding when you do tricks, that really messes with your head and affects how well the tricks happen. Just feeling that grind as you're going, you definitely don't want to feel that. You should feel like a nice smooth fingerboard wheel and that really affects how well you do the tricks. Some people it affects you more, other people it doesn't really affect them too much, but especially with a tech deck. My camera is not focusing at all. But especially with the tech deck, these wheels don't really roll very well at all. So I would definitely recommend bearing fingerboard wheels. Question 14. Is it better if my trucks are easier or harder to turn? if that makes sense. I know exactly what you mean. So trucks can turn like this if you have rubber bushings. And personally, I run my trucks like really loose, like not incredibly loose, but like they don't rattle when you shake it. But I just like the feeling of really loose trucks. And it really just depends on what you prefer. Some people like their trucks like really stiff where you can barely move it, just like a tech deck truck. And other people like them really soft, like me. I would definitely say it's a bit easier to pop for a trick if your trucks are looser, just because if you're going into like a turn while popping it, it'll kind of just help a little bit easier to pop the trick. Question 15, when is the time to get a better setup? So I don't entirely know what this question is about, but basically when should you get a new setup, I think is what they're saying. I would definitely say once most of the parts on your fingerboard have expired, it's time to get a new setup. I would definitely say the first thing that would go on a fingerboard is grip tape and then maybe the trucks, just if you grind a lot, then maybe the wheels if you have maybe a lower quality wheel. And I would say the deck is probably the last thing that you would want to upgrade. It really just depends what you do. But as long as your deck isn't cracked in any way or deformed in any way, I would say just keep the deck and just upgrade the parts. So question 16 is how do I become a pro at fingerboarding? I think this question is referring to how do you become sponsored at fingerboarding and how do you become like super good and get all the big brand names in your fingerboard career? And I would really just say like making a bunch of content for Instagram and YouTube really helps. I'm far from a pro fingerboarder right now, but 
that I definitely would like to become pro at some point, but I would definitely say making content for like Instagram and YouTube and just keep up that like algorithm and become like really popular on Instagram when it comes to fingerboarding and doing tricks, that's definitely the first step to becoming pro. And then from there, companies will just reach out to you asking if they can sponsor you and just send you some free stuff and then obviously say yes and then you're kind of considered pro. <laughs> Not actually until you start getting those like super big names and doing really good tricks. But yeah, I would definitely say keeping up on social medias is very important, if not the most important part. Because I see a lot of super good fingerboarders on Instagram, but they only post like once a month and it's just like a short little clip. I know that I don't post a ton on my Instagram, but that's because I am super busy with a bunch of other stuff. But if you do have the time, really just keep posting on Instagram really high quality clips and really high quality edits. And that would really help. Question 17, can I learn tricks on a tech deck? So a tech deck is just a cheap fingerboard and you definitely can learn tricks on a tech deck, but I would say it is way harder than on a proper fingerboard. So that took me like 10 tries to do a kickflip on a tech deck with only one wheel, but that's still quite a few tries. Whereas on my proper fingerboard, I can do them like almost every try. That was like four in a row. So yes, you can learn tricks on a tech deck, but I recommend at least even getting just a cheap Amazon fingerboard with foam grip tape, because that will really help. I've been fingerboarding for three years and still can't ollie, but my question is how long did it take you to learn an ollie? So if you've been fingerboarding for three years and still can't ollie, I would say that you've probably not been doing it super consistently, which I would say is super important. Like if I don't fingerboard for two weeks, it's really hard for me to consistently do tricks. And it took me about two months to get like a decent ollie, but I was using cheap Amazon fingerboards and a tech deck. So that's not really a super good example. But if you start right on a good fingerboard, you probably will learn them within like a month. And also when I learned, I learned, and then I kind of took like a year break from even touching or looking at a fingerboard. I just got super busy with making other stuff for the channel. And I made like a couple fingerboard videos right in the beginning, but then I kind of just stopped doing them until about this time last year. What's the first item I should buy besides the fingerboard and its components, for example, a ramp? I would definitely recommend getting the Black River picnic table. I know that this is my only Black River obstacle, but if you have a kind of a tight budget, I would recommend this because you can do quite a few things with this and it looks pretty cool. Either that or they have this one ramp that's like a spine and a ledge and a rail on it. And it's a really good deal, but it is like over $100 Canadian. So if you want like a higher quality obstacle, like higher quality as in just bigger, I'd recommend getting something like that. Question number, I think we are on like 20. Are my trucks supposed to have a space in between them? So short answer, no, they're not supposed to have the space, but that is because I've taken these trucks off, put them on like a ton of other boards, and I've been using these for like six months now. And basically one of the holes on these trucks were just over tightened, and I've also had these same trucks on like four different decks, and I've used them pretty hard. So that's pretty much the reason why there's a little space in between. Question 21, can I have a skateboard? I only have one skateboard and it's kind of my skateboard. So sorry, but you cannot have a skateboard. But if you want a fingerboard or three, plus an obstacle, wax, wheels, trucks, complete, grip tape, a bunch of other stuff, hopefully you entered in the giveaway. And speaking of the giveaway, in this video, I will announce the winner of the giveaway. This giveaway is a massive giveaway of a bunch of awesome stuff that you see here. A bunch of stuff fell off, but that's okay. So this giveaway has been going for about 10 days now, I wanna say. So after hundreds of people have entered, the random winner of this awesome giveaway is this Instagram user right Yay! here. Original Finger King. If you're watching this video, congratulations because you just won a bunch of awesome stuff. Huge thanks to everybody who showed a lot of love and support in this giveaway, and I can't wait for the next giveaway. Maybe I'll do a really big Christmas giveaway. But Original Finger King, I will DM you on Instagram to ship this out to you, and I will ship this out as soon as I possibly can. So congratulations. And with that done, that pretty much wraps up this video. So thank you for watching this video, and this was 21 beginner fingerboard questions. I know that a lot of you watching this video are really good at fingerboarding, but hopefully some of these questions even help you. So thanks for watching this video. We are super close to 16,000 subscribers, so check the subscribe button down there. 
everybody says that there's a glitch that unsubscribes people, but that really doesn't exist. Some people have proved that it exists, but more people have proved that that does not exist. But may as well check it down below just in case you thought you subscribed, but you actually didn't. And I'm pretty sure that's why people think there's a glitch. Or you can hit the subscribe button straight over there. Two more videos over there. Follow my social medias in the description down below. And check out my Discord that is brand new and you should definitely go check out. And I will see you in my next video.